How's it going guys? It's Evan. Today we're going to be replacing the e-gear accumulator. It's really not terribly complex. There's a lot of plastic that we've got to pull off to get to the e-gear control unit and all that. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull off on the spiders. Unfortunately, we've got all this plastic that is over the engine. So we're going to pull that off. That's going to give us access to the e-gear area. Now we're looking at the plastic shell we gotta take off. There's some 10 millimeter hex bolts, and then some, uh, these are like the triple square, I don't know if you can see these, yeah, triple square. Torx will fit them. These aren't Torx terribly tight, but uh, this whole thing will lift out. You actually don't have to take off the plastic tray that sits on top of the metal frame. We're just gonna take the metal frame out. There's one hex bolt under here, one of the 10 millimeters. You can see where I'm pointing. Uh, it's kind of underneath the plastic trim for the fuel filler neck. But if you use a socket with a swivel, and I'm using like a, this is a small ratchet, so it's a skinny extension, you can fit it right on there and get it off. I took the engine cover off. Definitely helps to have two people. It's kind of a pain, but you can see it opens up a whole lot. Um, I also just removed this frame member. There are five 13 millimeter hex bolts on that and it comes right out. There's no um, load on it. So that frees up a lot of space. You can actually see the accumulator. It is right down there at the, so if you see this line right here, follow that, you'll see the accumulator down there. Um, there are a few things that we can't get to from here, so I'm gonna jack it up and uh, remove the passenger side rear wheel and the inner lining. As you can see, I got the rear wheel off. I just pulled out the inner fender lining. Uh, it's some Torx screws all the way around. You can see now we've got access to the accumulators right under there. Uh, but this, we're looking at the back of the e-gear control unit, hydraulic valve block, whatever you want to call it. This heat shield, this, uh, this connects to the frame member that goes across and you kind of pull up and out like that. And with that out, it frees up and it gives you access to these, let's see, it's kind of hard to see there, but there are some 10 millimeters uh, that attach the e-gear control unit, valve lock, whatever, attaches that to its mounting bracket. I just got the 10 millimeters um, out of the bracket. So there are four total. You can see there's those two long ones right there and these two shorter ones. The two shorter ones come from the back. If you look up there, you can see where the bracket got two holes in it that goes into the back of the e-gear control unit bracket mounting bracket and then the other two you can see there's one of the holes uh, the other hole is kind of obscured by the e-gear pump so go back up top and show you I also I removed there's a bracket right here that uh, it's an allen screw goes all the way through the frame pull that off and then that frees up your e-gear lines the brackets and everything is actually, the movement in it is kind of prevented by, if you follow this line, I believe that goes to the uh, quick connect that then leads to the transmission for the throwout bearing. So there's a little bit of wiggle room now. Um, I'm gonna go underneath. That's where I'll actually get access to the threads on the accumulator. But for now, I've gotta undo, you can see this, there's a bracket that wraps around the top of the accumulator, preventing it from rotating. So I'm gonna get with get that. That's a 10 millimeter. Here's a new accumulator. You can see it's a 92 bar, 0 0.35 liter. You'll see that stamping on all of the ones, whether it comes in a Lamborghini box or uh, a Fiat box, as this one did. Get a close up. 
of the numbers on there. I've got the old accumulator out and the new accumulator in. You can see it looks pretty much the same. It's a bit cleaner. Um, I had to go buy a inch and 1 16th wrench. It's a 27 millimeter uh, on the top of the accumulator there. I didn't have anything that big. It's, it's pretty tricky um, to wiggle it out. Having everything loose, having the entire e-gear control unit uh, assembly loose helps. You pull it out from the top. So it kind of comes out from here, you wiggle it in between the heat shields but it comes out and then um, a quick tip, there's a, a bracket that this thing sits in and a, there's a rubber layer in that bracket. And I, I first put the accumulator in and as I was trying to twist it, because the rubber was kind of dry, it was just sticking on this smooth surface and I could not turn it by hand for the life of me. So um, I took a little clean engine oil and just barely um, wipes down the surface of that rubber, the in inside surface of that rubber. And that allowed me to twist the accumulator by hand to the point that then I could get it uh, seated on the O-ring there and then torque it down with my wrench. I'm gonna pull a vacuum. There's a bleeder nipple right here. So I'm gonna crack that, pull vacuum, make sure that the reservoir is topped up I've uh, just reconnected the battery. The pump has primed. It pulled a little bit of fluid. Um, I had topped up the reservoir. It dropped it to about halfway. So I'm gonna add a little bit more and then pull a vacuum, close the bleeder valve, and uh, let the pump prime again. Just kinda go through that a couple times and then I will uh, actually get in the car and go from reverse to neutral, etc. go through the gears. I just did some shifts, neutral, reverse, went up through the gears. Now previously, um, before I had replaced the accumulator, my pump primed every single shift, no matter reverse, neutral, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, every single time after the shift it would prime. Now I'm getting two to three shifts um, bef between the e-gear pump priming. So after doing the vacuum pump on this, I also, um, I just let it gravity bleed, you could call it. So I would do some shifts in the car, take the key back out of the ignition, crack the bleed screw again, let fluid flow, make sure that you're topped up up here. And just, I probably did that five times. So there's no air bubbles coming out and I'm gonna kinda put things back together here. I'll probably leave the uh, engine cover off just so I can do a double check for any kind of fluid leaks and stuff like that. It's worth noting I also, it's impossible to pull that accumulator out down there without leaking anything. You will drip fluid. Um, because I drip hydraulic fluid and it's, it's flammable, I mean, just like engine oil is, uh, I went ahead and sprayed everything down with soapy water last night and just kind of let it soak and kind of wipe things up as best I could today. So I'm going to put things back together and then uh, take it for a drive. Well, I just got back from a drive. Didn't miss a shift. I drove around for... About 45 minutes to an hour, just drove around town, um, went through, you know, did some highway driving. Everything's good. And uh, all in all, I would say it took probably two to three hours if I was to do it again. Uh, no leaks, new accumulators in. The bleeding wasn't all that hard. So if you have any questions, let me know. This is the uh, Lamborghini Gallardo accumulator fix.